All right, following up our video on Kirchhoff's current law, and oops, I spelled Kirchhoff's wrong. It is easy for me to forget that there are two Fs and two Hs in there. Anyway, in this video, we will discuss Kirchhoff's voltage law. So again, looking at the written out textbook definition, the sum of voltages around any closed loop in a circuit must equal zero. And you can think about this as a form of conservation of energy as opposed to conservation of charge for Kirchhoff's current law. Another more informal way of stating this, and again, this is how I learned it in high school physics without formally learning that it was actually called Kirchhoff's voltage law, is that voltages add in series and are the same in parallel. This is kind of the result of applying this law. So one easy way to do this for circuits where, again, the direction of current and voltage is kind of obvious, for lack of a better word. Say, for example, we have a battery with two resistors, I'll call them R1 and R1. R2, and I'm going to call the voltage drop across those two resistors V1 and V2. Remember, we had a previous video mentioning how voltage is measured between two points, so you have to be careful not to get the voltage at a point relative to ground mixed up with the voltage across something like a resistor. So notice how this voltage is not measured relative to ground. I'm talking about the voltage drop between those two points across this resistor. And say I have V of my battery over here. So in this case, you might be able to look at that circuit and just so, okay, I know that the voltage of my battery has to be equal to the sum of those other two voltages. These two voltages are in series, so they add, and then this branch is in parallel with the battery, so that voltage has to be equal to the battery voltage. If you already know how to do that, congratulations, what you just did is applied Kirchhoff's voltage law. A little more formal way to do that, I'm gonna redraw the circuit here, since that got kind of crowded, is to carefully go through using our passive sign convention that we covered in a previous video. So again, I'm gonna put plus and minus marks on these resistors, even though resistors are not polar. Remember, this is just a sign convention that I'm using to keep track of the signs of voltages and currents. I have V1 there, V2 there, and my battery voltage, V battery here. So I am going to draw a closed loop around this circuit. So I'm going to say, pick a point. This works out regardless of which point you pick and depending on the textbook or video you watch, there might be different conventions for where to start. I'm going to show you a couple different options here. One option is to start at ground and then I'm gonna go around a closed loop until all the way back to that same point. Remember, closed is a key word here. Summing to zero applies over a closed loop in the circuit. And when I do this, I'm going to say that batteries add voltage, which is positive, and resistors drop voltage, which is negative. So starting here, this is my zero point. I go through a battery, so that's gonna add voltage. So I'm gonna have plus my battery voltage. Then I'm going to go through a resistor, which drops voltage. So I'm gonna subtract V1. I'm gonna go through another resistor, which drops more voltage and subtracts V2. Then I am back to where I started, so I know that has to equal zero. And if I want to, I can rearrange this equation by moving the V1 and the V2 to the other side. So clearly that is exactly the same as the equation I had over here. This might seem like more work and making this a little harder than it needs to be. So again, if you learned it like this, really what you were doing may have been applying Kirchhoff's voltage law without realizing it. Now, one nice thing about this is it doesn't matter where I start that loop. For example, I could say I wanna start here and go this way and I'm gonna get the same answer. So and in that case, I would say, okay, I'm starting with V2, I'm gonna drop V2. I go over here, I add my battery voltage plus bat then I go through and drop this resistor voltage minus V1 equals zero and you can see that this is just a rearranged form of this equation so I'm getting the same answer there. Now another way I have seen this done again depending on the textbook or convention of the lecturer is to typically start at the positive terminal of the battery and go around the loop in the same direction I have the yellow here but add or subtract based on the sign that you encounter first. So rather than dropping or subtracting the resistors, in this case, I'm going to add because I encounter that plus sign first. So I'll add this one, add this one, and then actually subtract the battery voltage when I get over there. So if I do that, 
start here, go around, I'll actually I'll keep this one in blue so it's clear which one I'm referring to. I'm gonna have plus V1, keep going, plus V2, then actually subtract the battery voltage minus V bat equals zero. But again, this is all just rearranging terms in the same equation. So I move V bat over there and I have V1 plus V2 equals V bat. If it makes you more comfortable to have the battery on the left, then you just flip that around and you get V bat equals V1 plus V2. So there are whatever, three or four different ways there to all arrive at what is mathematically the same equation at the end of the day. So whichever approach you find most intuitive is fine. The point is to make sure all the signs are correct. So no matter which approach I took here, I wound up with the same equation. If I wound up with something that said V bat equals V1 minus V2, then I'd done something wrong here. So again, there are different ways to do it depending on which textbook you read or which class you take. People might have different ways of going through the process or doing the sign conventions, but you should arrive at the same answer regardless of which method you use. So we've been covering a lot of basics and fundamentals, but you need these building blocks in order to start analyzing more advanced circuits, which is what we're going to do in the next video.